Okay, for part of this episode of the Cornhole Journey, I want to take you inside my training to become a better flopper. I also call it a roll shot. I believe the, the guys are really good at this. They'll, they'll tell you that a back-loaded shot is a roll shot, a front-loaded shot with the tip down is more of a flop shot. Either way, whatever, we're going to get that bag to move over the top of an opponent's bag instead of an airmail, and that way go into the hole. So in this first shot here, it's going to land compress and reshape itself and it goes right over to the slick side. These are the uh, center cornholes, greed maxes. They're built for these kind of shots. And this is going to roll, I should say flop, right words, flop right over slick side into the hole. It flops over basically two bags, my own as well as my opponent's bag. Nice little skip there into the hole. And this next shot you see is going to land well short, a nice clean board actually, about a foot before any bag. But what it does uh, it it's it compresses and, and reshapes itself into kind of a wheel shot. You see this up and down vertical look. Uh, some folks call that a wheel, it's shaped like a spoke of a wheel. And that is exactly what we see here. It's just kind of wheel or roll right over, <laughs> excuse me, passing through <laughs> into the hole. So it comes in on more of a perpendicular angle to the board itself. Here's one from the camera view from behind the board. This one's going to pinch or hit the opponent's bag. And that's what a lot of these guys who do this say is the right spot is when to land it right in front where you actually, you can use both the board and your opponent's bag as like a, a pinch spot to keep your bag on the move and rolling or flopping right over. As you see it does here, it actually moves my opponent's bag a bit out of the way. Not quite a bar of soap, but it does move it basically out of play. Here's another one. This one is very interesting. This one landed way short. It looks like it was more of a wheel shot, a very slight angle, almost upright. And it compresses as we see here. And then it slides, look at this, it slides on its, on its uh, seam. Very interesting, just slides perpendicular to the board on its seam and then just hits a post bag and does the expected flop shot. Uh, move right into the hole. Now here's an aerial view. Of course, I shot all these with my drone. This one's straight over the top looking down, bird's eye view. This one's gonna land right there. Looks like it does land just short as well. As you see the, the angle of the bag changes, so I hit right for where the West Texas logo is. And as it compresses and pops up, it hits my opponent's bag, keeping that momentum going, and it flops right into the hole. Unfortunately, I moved my opponent's bag a bit closer, which can happen sometimes, but that's just part of the uh, price you pay for flopping. Sometimes you actually help your opponent's bag get closer to the hole. Here's one from the side, another shot where it's gonna pinch. I barely caught the pinch here. And this one, uh, it's, it splits the gap between the two purple bags, goes vertical again, and gets the intended result for flop shot for three. Another one, this hits more directly onto my opponent's bag. And it could have easily just popped right over the entire hole and missed the board, but it, it, it kind of checked up. It goes vertical, slowed down just enough, and caught the back. Oh, you see that? I almost missed it. It caught the back, back edge of the hole. So just again, to review on this one, if you hit and land too much on your opponent's bag, it can create a a reaction from your bag that just sends it flying over the entire hole. Uh, so be careful there. In this case, I got lucky, as you see here, I uh, was able to keep it in play, but just watch that. You don't want to take those flop and roll shots too far, too deep into the boards. Now here's one that actually didn't work. I'm going to show it to you because of what can happen. And I believe why I missed it was two of my opponent's bags were affected by this front loaded flop shot. Both bags were hit. And I believe that's why I didn't get my bag to roll over because you see my opponent's bag kind of pinches upward right there. A little mountain is created. 
that keeps my red green mags from, from flopping over. And then just two more shots here. I call this living on the, on the edge, or living on the left edge. <laughs> this one almost missed the entire board coming in at a definitely another flop angle, uh, almost a wheel shot where it's almost vertical, slightly front loaded. And it just is going to take a hard turn to the right, goes airborne right over the top, hits the back of the rim and falls in. That was a really dangerous shot. So here's one more different shot, but almost the same type of shot where look at that, it almost missed the board, almost threw it off the board. Instead, because it has that slight left right angle in the front edge, it's gonna take a hard right, it's gonna compress here, take a hard right, because that sticky carpet substance of the Green Maxes, and then just do its magic, rolls right over, hits the back edge of the hole, and drops in for three more. So anyway, the flop shot, add it to your game. If you can, it takes a lot of time just to be barely proficient in this shot. Do not try it late in a bracket <laughs> when you need to hit a big shot. Go with your trusty ones, right? But you may want to experiment with these in just your backyard games or early rounders of just some random fun switch holios and see how well you do these shots under pressure to build up confidence slowly to do it when it really, really matters. The big boys out there can do it on command. Hats off to you. I want to be like you. <laughs> You're the best. But for now, for those of us who are learning how to do these shots, just put the time in, put the practice in, but try all these, see what best fits your hand, your eye, how you release the bag, and try to develop this additional pitch into your arsenal. It's like a, it's like a pitcher in baseball, right? You don't just want just a fastball. You want to have that slide or that curve ball, the four seamer, the two seamer, the knuckle ball, the change up, whatever. You want to have different pitches available to you on command to use when you need them the right situation pops up. So try adding a flop shot or roll shot to your game. It may make you a better player in the long run on your own cornhole journey. Well, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to the cornhole journey. This is Rob Ice Price, baby, here with you again for another quick episode. I want to title this one, Frenemies. We were best friends. Now we're enemies. Frenemies. Precisely. Friends and enemies in cornhole. It's just part of the deal. Give an example. So I spent the last eight, nine weeks here in the fall league at the big league dreams of Mansfield with my partner, my good buddy partner, Rick Ellis. Great guy, just lives down the street from me here in Crystal Forest Estates in Midlothian, Texas. And so we partnered up for, I guess it was six, seven weeks, league play Tuesday nights. And we started off pretty bad. And we finished out of 14 teams, like near the bottom the first few weeks and slowly got our act together. And we finished, I think, ninth out of 14 teams by the time the bracket started. So we were definitely uh, overlooked and not one of the better teams in our league, but he gave me a great tip, which I'll tell you about later. Phenomenal tip, changed my life. And so we get, we get, we catch fire. We catch fire on the, uh, the bracket night a few weeks ago and we end up finishing fifth, and we actually make a little dough, a little cash. And I think we surprised a few people at our improved play. So it was awesome, we had a great time with Rick. But funny thing is, two days later, at a, at a switch in Midlothian, uh, he ended up being uh, not just my opponent, but the guy I was throwing against in the finals. He and Josh McFarland made the king seat, and I got teamed up with a, a, an up and coming rising star a young man named Witten. Uh, watch out for this kid. He's awesome. Well, we throw his bags, his wraths, and we we uh, win a few, lose one, work our way back to the loser's bracket. And in fact, they beat us, uh, Rick and Josh did, to put us in the loser's bracket. I said, we'll be back. Well, we were back. And so we ended up double dipping. My good friend, Rick Ellis, and also my good buddy, Josh McFarland, to, to take it down. And uh on a side note there, I had a chance to win it, I think around round 10 or 12, just put it in for the win. It was a very, very close tight game and I just left it short, just left it hanging. And so I, I was like so upset. They started coming back, they started scoring points and it was now like 19, 20, something like that. It was very, very close. Came down to where uh, Witten made an airmail drag to, to win the match. It was, ridiculous and he was going crazy i was going crazy it was about midnight it was late at night and where was the crowd we were all 
walk on. Anyway, it was so awesome. And so I was happy for my buddy. I, was, I said, I'm glad I missed that winning shot uh, 10 minutes ago. I wanted Witt to experience it. It was awesome. And so Rick was happy for, for him. So was Josh. We were all happy for the kids. So anyway, so Rick was my opponent two days after us teaming up together for like eight weeks. It was crazy. Well, three days after that, Witt and Rob Price uh, win in Thursday's uh, Midlothian Switch in uh, the after church on the Villa Road. We were throwing against each other at another switch, uh, watch a tournament, a fundraiser for MHS, Milton High School Project Graduation. I'm throwing against Witten, and the dude waxed me. He crushed me. And so it's just this weird circle of life that you have in Cornhole, where one day a, a guy or a gal is your friend, your buddy, your partner, and the next day or two, you're throwing against them. And I think it's one of the great things about this growing sport is allegiances uh, on the on the boards are are razor thin, right? The time has come. Execute order sixty six. Yes, my lord. Because you never know who you may be throwing against later. So I just think it's a great way to just always make friends off the court, love everybody, but to realize that you're studying your opponent, even though he might be your teammate, he could future in future rounds be your opponent. So keep that in mind and uh, play, ultimately it's your game you're growing. And here's the thing about Rick is, Rick's such a great guy. He gave me a tip a few weeks ago that really changed me. I think it propelled us to that fifth place finish because I was really uh, heavy weight for Rick the first few weeks. And he just caught me, sorry, he just taught me about an intermediate target along the floor or the grass or the boards between, uh, between the boards, I should say. And so to find an intermediate target, uh, to let my hand just go right through over that target, and not just look at the hole itself. So. It kind of straightened me out. I was throwing it left a lot, leaking it left, and it just kind of cleaned me up. And so I used that very tip against Rick two days later to, to, be, to beat him. So, But you know what? That's part of the game. Help each other grow. You see something in a buddy, a friend, a little tip, if they're welcome to receiving coaching, point it out to them. It, it's going to make them better. It's going to make you better when they play better against you. So we all get better. So let's not be selfish. Let's be generous. Let's be kind. And let's all grow the game together. Uh, with the buddies that we also call frenemies. All right, one more item to cover in this episode of the Cornhole Journey. As you see me editing the episode that you're watching right now on my editing system here, we've talked about flopping, we've talked about frenemies, and now we're gonna talk about my new fresh set of bags that I got from my friends at Black Sheep Baggers. Thank you so much, LD Ward and the team out there in Kentucky. Cannot recommend these bags to my listeners, my audience enough. I love the Costellos, love the OG2s. Uh, OG2s are about a four on the, on the carpet side, eight on the fast side, really good for flopping. <laughs> Video about flopping, rolling, and also just for blocking. And then these Costellos are my go-to bags, uh, five on the slow side and eight on the fast side. I have podium with both these bags from last year's models. Now I've got the 2023 models. Both bags, I cannot wait to throw these. They just came in the mail like a couple days ago. And uh, in fact, if you wanna go to the website, go to Black Sheep Baggers, you can see all the different options that they have for you. If you go to my YouTube channel, you can see in my description, use the discount code TCJ, the Cornhole Journey, and you can save 10% off any items purchased on the Black Sheep Baggers website. So there you have it. I love these guys, their sponsorship is great. And uh, they make great products. And they also sent me this in the mail besides the bags, check this out. I've got a growing collection of ice price jerseys when I play cornhole. Just got my seventh one in the mail a couple days ago. From my friends at Black Sheep Baggers, love this new look here. Of course, you got my name on the back, so jersey number seven in service. Love it. All right, there you have it. I cannot wait to wear that shirt in action as well. Gonna wear it loud and proud. And so, yeah, that'll wrap up this episode of the Cornhole Journey. Get your bags for the 2023 season. And uh, thanks for watching this episode of the Cornhole Journey. Never stop dreaming